miscarriage. Bringing the people's hearts here, even my own. But he's the only one that can save us. There is no other. He's the one we need to praise. He's the one we need to read about. He's the one we give some praise to. Amen. We also go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 20. There's a price that Jesus paid. You were brought at a price, therefore honor, you, honor God with your body. What price was that? It was the cross. The cross. That was his price. Amen. A lot of blood he shed, a lot of pain, a lot of pain he was in. But he was prepared to do it for us. He wanted to go. So, do we still praise, appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ even more? Is it starting to grow on us that we should appreciate Him each day? Let's just go a bit further. Honouring and appreciating the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 84. The first one. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul, soul yearns in evil things for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Amen. My soul yearns and even faints. Is your soul yearning for Jesus? My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Hallelujah. Hope you go home tonight and just go over some of these verses and see what the Lord will speak to you tonight before you rest your head on your pillow. My heart, my flesh cry out for the living God. That living God will always be there for us. He never leaves us nor forsake us. All we need to do is keep trusting in Him and have faith in Him. In 66, book 66, chapter 66, verse 3 to 5. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All of earth bows down to you. They sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works in the man's behalf. <coughs> All the earth bows down. Because that's what's going to happen one day. When Jesus, Lord Jesus returns, the whole earth will bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether they like it or not. If they don't bow, and even the ones that do bow to something, they, they will go the wrong way. But that's, that's life. While they live today, they have a chance of knowing Jesus Christ. They have that chance. They have that choice. We cannot force them on them. We cannot force them like on the streets, force to give them tracts. They are to take them voluntarily. Or they go. So, the mighty works that the Lord Jesus has done in us, we need to really appreciate. Amen. Appreciating Jesus Christ is worthwhile. So we need to keep trusting in Him. He died for us. The Lord Jesus died for each one of us. Are we doing our will today? Are we, are we doing His will? Are we doing our will? We go to John chapter 15. Three to five. John fifteen verses three to five. You, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. 
No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I am him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, from me, you can do nothing. So as that branch is part of the tree and we're bearing fruit, we cannot leave that tree. Because we will otherwise we'll be able to do nothing at all. We need Jesus Christ to do things. We need Jesus Christ. That's why I say from that last piece, apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah. I don't stand up here on my own wheel or my, on my own steam. I stand here with this, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Same as anybody else is here. So, that is uh, something we always have to take in. That Jesus is there for us. Yeah, as long as we are part of that vine. If not, then if we're away from the vine, then yes, he will not you and say, why are you in that place when you should be here? That's a question mark for one if you don't have it. If we go in the book of John again, chapter 10, verse 27 to 29. My sheep listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I am the Father, I am the Father of one. For Jesus here, is that they're saying, He will give us eternal life. He will give us eternal life. Let us be for once. We're in that branch, we're part of the flock. As he says in verse 28, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. And that is uh, quite something to say. Especially 2,000 years old when Jesus said this. And here we are, we're in a world that we're full of temptations, so many gadgets around us, and so many things to do, only if we had the money to do, and nothing will snatch us out of our out of, out of his, out of his hand. The, the one reason here is, we just have to stay, stay faithful. If we, if we really, really love the Lord, we will stay there with Him. We will stay faithful. If we've got one foot in and one foot out, the Holy Spirit is not going to pull you. You have to walk with the Holy Spirit. But the devil will definitely pull you in the way. So, this is why we need to appreciate God. We need to appreciate what he's doing for us daily. Even getting up in the morning, waking up and having breath is something to give thanks and appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ. But it doesn't matter how old we are. Even children, youths, are playing football in the playing field and then they, they for some reason, they got half an open and they fall down on the ground and two or three weeks later they're dead. It's happening all the time now. And to say, well, it's not going to happen to me, I'm all right. It's no, it isn't. Just like the work colleague at 53 years old. So, it's, uh, we are over here on the territory. And then we need to uh, keep, keep close to God. Keep close. We go to... Two Corinthians, chapter one, verse twenty to twenty two.
For no matter how many pr promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand serving Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is our heart. Yeah? So, he's came to you, you have accepted that invitation, and now we stay. You cannot say God is boring. If you're saying God is boring, then there's something wrong with your ball. Yeah. If, there's, if, you're, if you're born with Jesus Christ, then maybe you're not actually really saved. Then if you're not really saved, then you won't really won't really know Jesus Christ properly. Yeah. So if you think you're born with Jesus, you're born of church. See one, see the elders on me after the service. I want to talk to you because it's rather doubtful that you'll see. As it says in here, in verse 21, now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in your hearts, the Holy Spirit. As I said at the beginning, in 1 John 4.4, 4, uh, when we have that Spirit of God in us, He that is in us is greater than the one that is in the world. Okay. The Holy Spirit in our heart as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. The reason why it's a deposit is you still have the choice to walk away if you wanted to. But then you lose all right to return to life. Yes, unless you come back to you. Okay, so that is something to look forward to in the future. Eternal life. Yeah? Praising God in heaven. Because that is our destiny. Yeah? And I'm praying that it is your destiny. And that we can share the word of God with other people. Sharing you or where do you think you're going to spend eternity? Do you think uh, Jesus is real? Do you think uh, uh, whether you're going to heaven or hell? Ask them, put questions to them. Because we, we need to be more, more firmly, even myself. You know, I had uh, yesterday the left one my Bible and one of the lorries. Bloke came in. He saved it for me, kept it for me. And I came in for my brain. He said, Oh, I've got for you. I left your book behind. I said, No, I know I left my book behind. I know I left my Bible behind. Yeah. And I kept it saved for you. He said, I didn't really need it, but I made it easy. But I'll send you my heart, well, you also need it. So. But anyway. I just pray that the Lord will give me more chances to sort of share that word. That's it. So I just pray that the word of God that's encouraged you today, not to take his word for granted, but appreciate what you have in your hand, the living Bible. It's a love letter from the Lord to you. Share for yourselves. In your family, because evangelism first starts in your family, with your children, or if you your mother and fathers, parents, and then out into the world. Yeah? So, I pray that you have a blessed week and uh, appreciate the word of God and keep reading. And bless your devotionals and bless your prayers. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, we say. Help us, Lord Jesus, to appreciate you more, Lord. Help us to appreciate your word. Help us to appreciate what you actually do to us, do for us, day after day, Lord. We haven't got enough things to count of what you do for us today, Lord. 
Father, we thank you, Lord, that through your grace and your mercy, Father, Father, you have given us a special gift. You have given us a special life. No matter what's going on in our lives, we just thank you for it, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Continue to strengthen us and guide us on this week ahead, Lord. Continue to strengthen us through the work that we do and continue to guide us through your wisdom, Almighty God. Bless us with more wisdom, Almighty God. Bless us with more understanding of your word. If we give you thanks, my Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the cross. Thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. And may you keep praying for the precious blood on your lives. Thank you, Lord. Guide us, teach us, and hold us, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.